Welcome to the Crane Training Overview for the Erector Station. In this video, I will be using the Crane Add Tool, demonstrating a general idea of the implementation. For more in-depth training, see the videos on specific aspects of the Crane Tools, for example, adding manufacturers. The newest addition to the Erector Station, previously called the Global Review Station, is a Crane Tool. The purpose of this tool is to assist in determining the crane to use, possible lifts and scenarios, reports and crane placement drawings, as well as other valuable data concerning crane lifts. When you open modeling, a blank selection list will appear. This is because erection views for the crane placement drawings have not yet been created. By selecting the Show All checkbox in the bottom right, all the erection views created by the detailer will be available for selection. If I select to open one of these views, such as isometric, I can then save this view as an erection view for crane placement. It will now appear in the crane placement erection view list. I can also create from this list a new erection view for a crane placement drawing. I will begin by determining the heaviest member in the project. Using status display, I will remove the concrete since I'm interested in the structural steel only for now. After running the greatest weight report, we can see that C7 has a load of 1,627 pounds. Using the model tree, I will find that member to review. Next, let's say we'll be assembling some members in the ground before lifting. I will check the weight and the center of mass of the assembled members. What if you would like to save the selected members for the assembly lift for future use? From the Edit drop-down, you can save the selected members from the model. Once saved, these selected members can then be loaded again. Let's add in a 2D site drawing to help with any obstructions such as power lines. In this drawing, I added previously in 2D my proposed pad layout. Now that this is complete, we will determine the crane to be used. First off, I'll determine whether SDS2 has the crane manufacturer model available. I can add in the crane manufacturing and model, or if the crane is available, I can review the data. Currently, we only support tower cranes and crawlers with fixed and luffing jibs. Now, I will add in a T-Rex HC80 crawler crane and then refine the configuration by using the filters to select an 80-foot boom and then set to four parts of line. I will add in the default values for the lift configuration which will be used for the deductions. I will then be prompted for a placement name. This crane will have multiple placements Notice that you can modify the lift configurations for each placement. As you will see, the lift configurations can be modified down to each individual lift. On a side note, you can also have multiple cranes with multiple placements on the project. As I add in the crane and furthest laydown point, you'll see the members change color. As the crane and furthest laydown point are being set, the system is calculating on the fly the feasibility of the lifts, members in this case, for the crane using the current crane configuration, placement location, and furthest down point. The color green means that the members can be lifted, orange will mean a critical lift, and red means failed. Critical lift is determined as per OSHA subpart R. The values being checked are the strength stability of the crane, the hoist capacity, parts of line, the reach radius and the lifting height. Concerning the reach radius, the member or assembly of members lift point is taken from the center of mass of the member. 
By using the show liftable members, we can see that I am not able to lift any of members on Axis 1 due to the reach. Let's move the crane placement closer to the building. Notice the area that is not in blue. This is the no lift zone around the crane. In an isometric view, it will appear as an inner cylinder. Verifying with the show liftable members, we can see that the column on grid A1 is a failed lift using the current crane values. By using the check assign member lift, we can see that the controlling factor for this column is lift height at the set point. If the pick point were governing, we could modify the furthest laydown point and possibly successfully lift the member, but this is not the case because the member exceeds the lift height. So if we want to do a lift of the members on grid 1 from this location with this crane, we're going to have to make some modifications to the crane. We could make the boom longer or add a fixed or luffing jib to the crane. Let's use a 20 foot fixed jib at 5 degrees. And then modify the default lift configuration for the added whip line. Notice that there are now two blue no lift zone cylinders, one for the main boom and one for the whip line. By the way, each ring represents 10 feet. Now when we use the show liftable members, we see the members on grid 1 are liftable with this crane placement and configuration, at least the members up to grid line C. Using the check assigned member lift, I will view the calculations for the lift of the column on grid A and 1. This column is liftable. Let's assign it to the lifts for this crane placement. I would like to mention at this point that this is the fabrication model. These are not estimated weights of members in the lift. These are the exact weights of the fabricated members with all their attached material. It is now time to add more lifts to this crane placement using assigned member lifts. This tool will allow you to assign many members to the crane placement. I'm going to use the by selection method. And yes, once again, you can modify the lift configuration for the assigned lifts. Notice that members that do not fit the criteria such as failed members are transparent with a yellow edge and are not selectable. We can see the column on grid A and 1 is not selectable since we already assigned it to the lifts for the crane placement. In recent releases, we have replaced the yellow outline by darkening the member of those members that cannot be assigned to the placement. Members that are able to be assigned to placement will be in their native color. Selected members are a blue secondary selection color. I will also grab some members that may be liftable but really cannot be erected at this time. Using the status display, I will view all the members that are attached to this crane placement. Now I will move on to the Manage Lifts tool. This is the lift central control for the crane at the selected placement, allowing you to view, modify, and delete lifts. When I run the tool, we see listed all the lifts assigned to this crane placement. When a member is selected in model, we can see that the member is respectively selected in the Manage List. If I select all, we can see in the model all the members assigned to the placement, just like the status display we just ran. 
I will remove these two beams from the lift list by model selection and delete them from the lifts list. These members will need to be lifted after the column on grid D3 has been placed. Let's view this beam to see the lift calculations performed. We see the load weight, the line used, the pick point data with the deductions, the set point data with the deductions. I'm going to make some modifications to this lift. When edit is selected, I can modify the pick location. This is especially useful if it is a heavy lift and I want to move the pick location closer to the crane. I can also modify the default values used for the lift. For example, the hoist line used to perform the lift. I'm going to increase the deductions by adding 9,965 pounds of miscellaneous additional weight. When I view the calculation, we see that the lift is indicated in orange as a critical lift in the status field. In the Manage list, I can also filter the list to see the lifts that are critical. When I load a pre-created status, we will see the critical lift member is orange and the non-critical past lifts are green. This will conclude part one of the overview. Please proceed to part two.